You're listening to The Green Flag with your hosts, Lucas Wacker and Kyle Cushman. Finish of the year is the next award. We're into the big stuff now as we count down the days of 2022. It's coming to an end. We're getting close to the year end stuff here, like the big, heavy hitting awards. And today is finish of the year. This is a lot to your own interpretation on what you think is a good finish. Um, yeah. Does that include, you know, a late race battle, but then it's an easier finish? Or is it a action pack sequence on the final lap and that is how you describe the best finish of the year there's a lot of different ways you can go about it and that's just the great way about this award is that it's down to the race fans perspective and what you enjoy as a race fan so um this is a fun one and i'm really looking forward to seeing what you have for this nomination but you want to start off here kyle with the third place for the finish of the year let's do it this was a fun one to uh Try and remember some races, think back, try and find some different ones, not just stick to like NASCAR finishes, whatever it is. I watched uh, my nominations like 15 straight times because I was like, oh, I need to, what was the best finish of the year? And then I'm like, oh, I have to keep on rewatching this. Mm. Nice. Uh, Anyways, my number three finisher for this one uh, is a race that I did not watch live is a series that I want to watch more often, but don't really get the opportunity to, but the highlights are always superb. And I was put onto this finish by a certain NASCAR podcast, uh, Door Bumper Clear, as a matter mm. of fact. Uh, and that shot Sheldon Hoddenschild going from sixth to first in the final four laps of the inaugural High Bank Nationals at Husset Speedway, t- past two cars in the penultimate corner, ripping the top. Um, dirt racing is phenomenal. It is so, so entertaining especially in the sprint cars when they just sling it around the top. Um, it, it, there are a few things quite like it uh, in motorsports. And Sheldon Hoddenschild went from four laps to go, was in sixth place at these tiny dirt tracks, ripped it around the top for four laps, and, uh, and then on the penultimate corner, passed the first and second place cars to take the win uh, at the inaugural uh, High Bank Nationals. Um, if you haven't watched it, which I imagine I you have haven't, not. You got to go check it out. Literally, all you have to search is Sheldon Hoddenshield Pass. And the first video that'll come up is in all caps, Sheldon freaking Hoddenshield. Are you kidding me? Unreal with like 15 exclamation points. Uh, awesome stuff. Uh, that's my number three finish of the year. You sold me pretty well on it. I'm not going to lie. Um, that's that's good stuff. Um, for me, in my third spot is the finish to the Martinsville fall cup race this comes in third spot for me that might surprise some people but it wasn't for the race win and that's why it is not up there for the win of course we all know what ross chastain did in the final couple of corners there where he ripped the wall but i also want to look at the race win itself by christopher bell getting that clutch victory to put himself in the championship for he had to work for that and i was very skeptical of it when it seemed like the older tires on Briscoe and the others that stayed out there was a lot better uh, than what maybe I expected, but then they fell off of a cliff and the fresh tires really paid dividends and bell was able to work his way past there with around five laps to go past uh, chase Briscoe. But then you include Ross Chastain's move to put himself in a spot for the championship, passing Denny Hamlin, no less coming to the start finish line, the drama, the excitement, the triple screen that we got to always see in those final couple of laps of Martinsville is spectacular from a viewing perspective when you watch it on TV. When you're live at the track, I'm sure it was fantastic as well. But when you see the triple box and there is action going on on each of those screens and you know what's at stake, it really, really amps you up. And I can't think of a crazier actual ending to the moment with what Ross Chastain did in every single race that I've ever watched in my life. But for the finish itself, if that was for the race win, that's an easy number one. But the fact that Bell was able to pull away there in the late laps by over a second, by over Kyle Larson, I can't quite give it the finish of the year, but it may make an appearance here in a later category coming up. But uh, I will finish this one in third spot for the Martinsville Fall Cup race. Not in my top three for finishes of the okay. year. Okay. Um, for me, that's more of a moment of the year than it is a finish, but I understand mm-hmm. uh, your thought process there on that one because there was a lot going on. 
at the finish of that race. Uh, number two for me for finish of the year, we're staying on the dirt, but coming Whoa. up to Canada. We are looking at Trayton Lapsovich victory over Stuart Friesen at the first ever dirt race uh, in the Pinty Series history at Ashwigan Speedway. Uh, a great final two lap battle between one of the young guns in Canadian motorsports and a NASCAR driver making a one off appearance at the Pinty Series level on dirt. A restart, two to go, green white checker, and it was side by side the entire time. Two guys racing each other clean, a bit of bumping and banging going into the final uh, stretch there, but an absolutely phenomenal race all all night long. It was a great inaugural event for the Pinty Series, but literally the entire final two laps are these two guys side by side, freeze and pulls ahead, just going into the final lap of Lapsovich, bumps him into the penultimate corner, gets on his inside, and then they say side by side, door banging all the way back around to the finish. An awesome, awesome finish. Um, this year and as we say time and time again the pinty series is super super underrated and that finish underrated for me as well that gets the runner-up position for finish of the year okay okay i am staying on the dirt as well but at the cup series level um the oh, second come place on. that is an unbelievable finish uh is the tyler reddick chase briscoe wrecking each other for the win in the final two corners of the bristol dirt and none other than mr kyle bush taking home the victory and of course there is some sentimental value in this one knowing what it yeah, meant no now, bias whatsoever here but for that to be his final win as a jgr driver just makes it all the more special to me as a fan and that is why I'm pumping it up to Mickey second Mouse. spot. Um, as much as we don't like the Bristol dirt, um, we would much prefer to see it on the regular concrete because it's proven time and time again how good of a race that is. Um, the Bristol dirt this year was much improved compared to last year, and a lot of the reason was because of the you know constant rain that kept on happening to soak the track and keep it a little bit more a lot of, a lot more moisture in the track, so it wasn't so dusty, and we got actually some pretty decent racing on it. Um, but the finish itself. Chase Briscoe chasing down Tyler Reddick in those final laps. Like, I mean, he was coming like a bat out of hell. I mean, he was so, so fast compared to Reddick. Those two are in a different zip code to everybody else. And then for them to both spin and wreck each other, Reddick gets it going and still almost wins the race. And here comes Kyle Busch with a full head of steam. He almost wrecked off a of turn four getting so loose because he was in the gas. And he ends up taking it by about a car length or two over Tyler Reddick. I mean, I was jumping up and down, screaming. I mean, I was so happy for Kyle. And uh, just knowing what that moment means now in, in hindsight, I probably wouldn't have put it as high if it wasn't his final win for JGR. But with what it means for what he gave to that organization for it to end that way in victory lane was was pretty cool. So I'm going to give that as the second best finish. I mean, it's, an, it's a remarkable finish. It's up there with one of the top finishes in NASCAR this season. But for me... I have to give it overall across racing. I loved it so much that I have to put it in the second spot. Mickey Mouse. That's all I have Get to say. Get out of here. Come on, man. I don't Mickey I... win. That's all that matters. It's a Mickey win. Uh, number one for me, uh, this was a pretty easy one for myself. There is nothing in motorsports, in my opinion, quite like the spectacle of IndyCar racing on ovals. The speed, the danger, um, it is spectacular how close they race how many great moments we get uh, out of that. It is, if you want oval racing and and you don't like the NASCAR stuff because of the stage racing, whatever it is, if you want full races, strategy, all that stuff, I hope we get more ovals on the IndyCar side of things because it still has that full race distance. You got to get the strategy right, all these kind of things. And yet so often it still comes down to these final moments. And this year we had one of those electric final moments at Texas Motor Speedway where Joseph Newgarden tracking down his teammate, Scott McLaughlin, who had dominated the entire race. Newgarden catches up to him for the final couple of laps, has a lap car in Colton Herta get in the way, drops back a little bit, charges as Scott McLaughlin catches the back of a few lap cars, sends it on the outside uh, in the final corner and pulls off the pass going to the stripe. Uh, just remarkable stuff earlier this year 
at Texas Motor Speedway from New Garden. And it's important to remember the context of Texas Motor Speedway and these Indy cars. If you get up into that traction compound, it is an automatic spin because of the, the heat involved, because of the tires involved with Indy car. We've seen it time and time again where people get a little bit out of the groove, they hit the black stuff, and they're in the wall time and time again. You got to have you-know-what to go on the outside and try a pass like that. New Garden did it. He got the win because of it. Remarkable finish when you factor in the speed, the danger, everything like that, and what it ended up meaning for these two guys going for early season championship positions, all that kind of stuff. And just the second race of the IndyCar season gets the finish of the year for myself. It's a great pick. It's a great pick. But my finish of the year... You don't have this finish in your top three? No. You are no. psycho. Uh, this one was an easy one for me to give to number one. It's I was I, I couldn't believe what I was watching. It is the NASCAR Xfinity Series finish at Darlington. Wow. I mean, to watch that <laughs> run to the finish on worn tires, what Sheldon Creed had on the line to try and make the playoffs, the defending Cup Series champion, Kyle Larson, the best finish, the best driver in the Xfinity series, in my opinion, in 2022, Noah Gregson, all fighting for the win out of control. Like it reminded me of Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon at Atlanta back in 2011. Like they are slip sliding around trying to spin each other out with the, with the arrow going into corners. I mean, it's insane. When you go into that final lap and you think, oh man, who's going to give, who's going to give. And nobody gave in a turn one. They both ended up hitting each other. Larson into the wall. Then Creed is slow down the back straight away. Gregson comes out of nowhere from third and goes to the inside of Larson. He goes into turn three. Creed rips the wall, sparks flying everywhere. And Gregson does a slide job on him, hits the wall himself. Creed goes still around the wall and Gregson goes back underneath him and cuts by and wins the race. I mean, that's just an unbelievable finish. It, it cannot get better than that, really, in my opinion. When you've got a guy ripping the wall like that. I got that, three better, technically. He, he did what, you know, at least Creed had a playoff spot on the line going for his first Xfinity Series. When I know it's at the Xfinity Series level, so the playoffs aren't quite as important. But nonetheless, there is some stakes in, involved in that. And it's late on in the regular season. There's a lot of pressure going on. And it's Darlington where you're slip sliding around. It is one of the driver's most favorite racetracks. It's one of the fans' most favorite racetracks. As much as it can go on for green flag runs, the drivers are on edge the entire time. And for it to come down to that on that final lap was just breathtaking. I couldn't believe what I was watching. So, and for Gregson to win, do the burnout, puke on himself. I mean, like it's just everything in involved in that culminated to me easily giving this the best finish of the year. When I was, it was the, <laughs> the race that I was probably on edge the most when I saw the finish live, I was like, I got it. I wasn't even working that day. I was like, I got to clip this. Like, this is just unbelievable stuff. So um, I give it to the Darlington Xfinity series race as the finish of the year. Great pick. And the fit, the racing leading up to that finish, I think yeah, is absolutely deserving of finish of the year. The one thing that I think one of the key differences between my picks and your picks is that, the racing that I want to see for the finish, I want to see be decided between the guys actually battling for the lead. Whereas with you, the top two picks for yourself, the two guys fighting for the lead crash out and it's the third place guy coming through. I like that. The, the, the I, shock value of that. The Just shock the value shock. of that is good, but in terms of finish of the year, I want to see it be two guys going head to head and, and one of the two come out, not somebody fluke into a win. For third, I the surprise value, absolutely not docking your picks at all, but I'm saying in terms of the stylistic picks here, I think that's one of the key differences. And that's, what's great about this category. Yeah. That's why I love it so much is because we can have that difference of opinion on what you want to see as a race fan. Do you want the shock value? I love a good side-by-side -side battle, but man, when a guy from third sneaks out a win and there's that much chaos going on in front of them, uh, it's just, it's too good to to not give it for my opinion, but those are some great picks. I kind of want to give a little bit of an honorable mention to maybe the Martinsville spring race for the Xfinity series with Brandon Jones getting the win. That was a pretty insane finish as well. Like I, I feel like that we got some great finishes throughout the entire season. Um, Xfinity series. All level right, kept if we're, on if we're given honorable mentions, how about one that isn't even for motorsports It's from esports. Uh, the Casey Kerwin win at Pocono in the eNASCAR series was insane with a bunch of late race restarts, green, white checkers, 
and he sends it up the inside, beating and banging to the line, looking like the esports version of the GOAT finish of Kurt Busch and Ricky Craven at Darlington. Um, and that win books his ticket to the playoffs, and he eventually wins the championship because of that win. So, uh, hey, if we're given honorable mentions, how about that one hey, from the esports side? Love it. Love to give a shot to the to shout out to the esports guys. So, yeah, finish of the year, arguably one of my favorite categories for sure. So, uh, we did not have any repetition as well in this one. I think that's the first award that we did not have. Yeah anything crossover Which means so, all my picks are right and all of yours are wrong clearly that's basically what that means so um let us know what you think in the comment section yes. what was your finish of the year we'd love to know what your top three was and give us a little bit of a reason why because i think that is always a bit of help when there's some context on what you're looking for as a race fan so for myself it's the darlington xfinity series race and for kyle it is the indycar finish at texas with scott mclaughlin losing to joseph newgarden in the final corner